a cheap and easy way to grab a bunch of manipulatives. It's a cheap and easy way to get a bunch of manipulatives, manipulatives, manipulatives. Hey everyone, it's Susan Jones and welcome back to my Sunday Spotlight. In case you don't already know, every single Sunday here on my channel, I go ahead and upload a brand new video with a game or an activity or an idea that you can take and use right away in your classroom. All of the activities or games I share are geared towards grades kindergarten, first, and second grade. This week I actually have three games for you, and these are geared towards grades kindergarten and first grade. So second grade teachers, if you're listening and you have some students that need help with number sense or place value, some of these will work for you, but they're really geared towards K and one. And these games in particular, I shared them, I think three years ago over on my blog as Halloween games but you don't have to use them for Halloween and I'm going to show you how to make them seasonal and also how to use them all year long. So let's dive into three free math games. This first game is great. It's just going to have students grabbing items and counting them up and comparing them with a partner. The game is called Take Them and all you need for this game is this little recording sheet here. Let's see if I can zoom in on that. I don't know if that zoomed in, but anyway, all you need to play is a dice and you need 20 items of some kind that you can store in a little cup. I'll go ahead and share pictures of how I did this seasonally with Halloween little goodies or erasers that you can grab at Target. The little bears I grabbed in this photo are from Oriental Trading, but you can just go ahead and throw 20 or so of those items in a cup to play. Then students will take turn rolling the die. And if you roll a one, it says take one, two, take two, three, take three. And then four is skip turn, five is put one back, and six is put two back. So you really wanna play this with those kindergarten or very beginning first grade students where they are learning to just take one or two from the cup at a time. And they're just adding those to their pile until the cup is gone. Once all the cubes or the bears or whatever seasonal item you put in here are gone, you just go ahead and count up. Students count up how much they have and whoever has the most wins. It's a very simple game that students can play over and over. And again, it just has them counting ones, twos, and threes, putting them back in, has a little skip turn action, so it's fun. And at the end, they are comparing some larger numbers. Another kindergarten game that you could easily make seasonal is called Stamp the Most. And for this game, you just are gonna need this little sheet here. It has player one and player two and a little spinner. Now what I love about this spinner, let me see if I can zoom it in here. What I love about this spinner is that it has different ways to show the numbers. There are some tally marks, there are fingers showing, there are tens frames, and there are the number words. So students will just use a paper clip um, and a pencil to spin it around. And whatever they land on, that's how many stamps they are going to put in their grid. Students go back and forth until one player fills up their grid first, and that's how they win. If you're a K-1-2 teacher, you know that stamps can be really fun for kids, so you can get all different color stamp pads. And again, in this picture, I got those from Oriental Trading. You can find something like that on Amazon, just little Halloween stamps. They probably even have them in the Target dollar spot. But again, you could kind of take this one sheet here for kindergarten and continue it on throughout the year and for different holidays just by changing out the stamp. The last game I have for you is called Place Value Pumpkins, or you can just do Place Value Cups. I have a sheet for both, so if you don't want to make it seasonal. But the way this game works is it's for students who are working on beginning place value. So they are working on counting things up, and then whenever they get to 10, they're making it a group. So for this game, all you're going to need is some straws. And I just went and bought a colorful pack of straws from Target, I think it was. It came in all different colors. And I just cut those straws into thirds to make a bunch of them. It was a cheap and easy way to get a bunch of manipulatives that were easy and fun for kids to work with. Now to play this game, you're going to want to take all of those straw pieces that you cut up and you're, you're gonna want at least 50 of them to play, and you wanna put them in either a cup or a bowl of some kind, and students are going to take turns, and they will first go ahead and roll two dice. Six. They will find the sum of the dice that they rolled, and then they will grab that many straws. Once they have their straws in front of them, they will go ahead and pass the dice to the next person, and they will roll and collect their straws. Now, throughout this game, every time a student has at least 10 straws in front of them, they will need to group them up. 
So they will group up their straws and they will either put them in these cute little pumpkins like the ones I got here from Oriental Trading or they can just go ahead and put it in a little Dixie cup. Every time they get a group of 10, they put it in the Dixie cup and move it to the side. Students will continue rolling the dice. They will find that sum. And like I said, every time they get a new 10 in front of them, they go ahead and move that to the side. I like these types of games as a teacher because as I'm going around, I can ask students how many straws they have in front of them. And I'm able to easily identify if students can count up the tens first and then add on the ones that they have in front of them. This game ends once all the straws in the bowl or the cup or whatever you had them in at the beginning, once they're all gone. Then students will take a look and using their little sheet here, they will compare how many straws each person had to see who wins that round. And again, when students are counting that, you want them to count the groups of tens first and then add on the ones afterwards. This game can go pretty quickly if students keep rolling high numbers, so I always make it so they can play the best of three. Like I said, I have the pumpkin one if you wanna make this a Halloween type center, or I just have place value cups where I have little cups on there for them to record as well. That one can be done throughout the year. So there you have three easy math games that you can play with your kids either in October right now, or you can save these games for later and take up the seasonal aspect all together. I hope you enjoyed those three easy games. The printables will all be linked down below for you to grab. They are from my Teachers Pay Teachers store, but they are free, so make sure you grab those. And while you're there, leave me some feedback and let me know how you like those games. As always, if you like this video, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up so I know, and make sure you're subscribed and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new week's video. See you next week. Bye.